Uh, my name is Maya. I can say that I'm passionate about home automation, probably because I worked in home automation some time, for a while. I also have a sort of smart home. And uh, most of all, I believe that uh, we can improve home automation. And uh, what you will see uh, in the following slide is almost this. Uh, what are the problems I see in the home automation systems today? Um, how I'm trying to solve the, problem, the problems I see in my way. <laughs> And uh, in the case you want, uh, how you could uh, use this my pet project that uh, I'm trying to present you. And uh, this inter entire talk is about a smart, just on-off, nothing else than on-off uh, light. I mean, uh, a switch. And uh, this is my first question. Why do I buy a switch to put in my kitchen? So uh, one reason is when I cook, my hands are dirty. Outside it's uh, dark. And I don't want uh, to switch on the button. Uh, my system should be smart enough to turn on the, the light automatically. But sometimes, even though outside is dark, uh, I need, uh, for some reason, I don't want my light to stay turned on. And I want to be able to say to my system that it should leave the light turned off, even though outside is dark. And in the very same way, when it's bright outside, I always forget to uh, turn off my light because I mm, never, I didn't, I don't realize that the light is on. And I want my system to do it automatically. But again, sometimes maybe I'm working in the darkest corner of my kitchen and I want to tell my, my system, okay, now, let the light turn it on, even though it's bright outside. And I want to be able to force my light to stay on. And another way to say what I'm saying is this. Uh, what I want is a state machine. Uh, it's a quite simple state machine. It has four states. And in this case, we are managing six events. And I can explain a little, maybe, uh, what's the, yeah. Uh, uh, for example, what is this first uh, uh, event uh, we are managing? I mean, uh, my, light, my system thinks that uh, it's a good moment for my light to be off. It receives a motion event. And it could be that uh, it changes my light to off or on. It depends if it is dark outside or not. And um, maybe we can spend also one more minute on the forced events. Um, we can uh, go from uh, into a forced event starting, uh, oh, yeah, we are, if my light is for the system is off, then I can force it on. And if my light is on, then I can force my system uh, to, to an off uh, uh, state, to a forced off state. And one more thing could be, um, how can we exit uh, from a forced state, we can use again the same push button. So uh, we are forcing it off if we are in a forced on. Sometimes I use also the events to exit uh, 
uh, a forced state. It really depends on the state machine you want for your device. And that said, my next question is, how complex it is to find a re reuse, for me, such an obvious automation? And uh, I try to answer the question using Home Assistant, uh, which I think the most of you know, but for the one that don't know this uh, project is Nowadays, I think the biggest open source project uh, we have. Um, and yes, so I'm looking something for Home Assistant. And this is the closest solution I was able to find. Um, this is not written by me. I found it uh, Googling for a solution for my problem. So we now go. Uh, through this code is not so long, but let me tell you something about this. Um, first thing is, we here we are uh, reacting to a trigger. <coughs> and uh, so we are managing an event, but we should guess which event we are managing. Uh, and probably this is a motion event and we can guess this by reading the name of the devices uh, which made the trigger. And when we have guessed that this is a motion event, the next thing is uh, understand which will be the state of our light. And the state for, the our, for our light will be um, a non-state because we are calling a service that says, turn on my lights. Uh, yeah, turn on my kitchen, li my kitchen lights. And uh, then we are, also, we are also saying that we wait for another, another kind of event. And again, is, a ev is an event regarding the motion. This time is a no motion event. And in this case, the final state for my lights will be an off state because we are uh, yeah we are calling a service which is light to off so in this script we are uh, dealing with two events and two states for the lights there is something more these guys also as designed um, uh, a forced on state, some sort of forced on state. And uh, he used for do this an input Boolean. An input Boolean is a graphical, um, yeah, is a, an entity in Home Assistant that you can use. And uh, okay, it named this entity kitchen light override. And um, when this kitchen light override is selected, then uh, what uh, uh, we get is a, mm, uh, yeah, I want to, s okay, well, we tour, uh, yeah, well, okay, yeah. When the input boolean is selected, then we turn off the automation we have seen before. So we don't care anymore about the motion. And we said to the and also we say to the system, okay, turn on my kitchen lights. So we disable somehow uh, all, all the logics behind the motions. And uh, yeah. Um, this is almost the same, but it's the default case. So when the input boolean is not selected. What, uh, what are the problems I see here? I, yeah, I can summarize them here. I think that this uh, 
automation is complex to be reused. It mixes together the states, the events, and the triggers. The, the triggers. I, I, I have already said that we need to guess which are the events we are reacting to. We are need to somehow guess which are the states for our final light. Uh, and this is more visible when you have more scripts that then uh, take care of the same devices. And also another thing is, in my mind, when I think to a forced on state or a forced off state, I don't think to use another entity in a user interface or maybe another push button in your room I mean, I have a push button that can control my light. I want to say to the system, OK, now uh, I'm forcing you to behave in a different way w with just that push button. And uh, OK, one more thing here is not uh, listed. Um, all we have seen. Uh, was for uh, was dealing with just three events out of the six I need. This is another problem. Problem I see. We have this light automated, and uh, to the end user, the automated light looks like this. I mean, it's like any other non-automated light. Um, I don't really think this is much useful. Um, how can I tell if someone has forced my light or if it is just turned on because the system knows that it should be turned on? And if I want to force it, you probably can say me that I can um, put here near this widget, the other widget, the input Boolean widget. but. Uh, if I am the one that uh, has written the script, probably I can understand it. Otherwise, mm, maybe that's not the case. And it's not just a matter of widget. It's, I think, much more a matter of models. Uh, and I try to explain you what I mean with this slide. Uh, here we can see the history of uh, light here, sorry, is in Italian, but um, the first row, it means uh, turn it on, the second row, turn it off, the third row, turn it on, and the, four, uh, the last one, turn it off again. And I um, wonder if someone find this useful, really useful. I mean, I never look at this kind of Mm, history because, uh, okay, I can say that my light I has been turned on for a while, maybe I can say it's more than I need, but behind my light there is much more, I think. I, wa I want to be able to see, uh, <coughs> yeah, all, all the other uh, events that can make change this light. Um, so for me, this model, this just on-off model, is not helping you and the others in your home understand wha what is going on. And I think this is the cause. Uh, this is taken from the Home Assistant website. And I think the uh, really interesting uh, sentence is the first one. I mean, uh, yeah, this one. Home automation itself has never been a goal of home assistant. And I think that the point is this. Home assistant is, as all the other home automation system I know, are thought to, be, to let you control your devices, not really to automate them. And if you remember in the slide we have seen before, there were a big uh, there, uh, <laughs> um, there was a big focus on the uh, voice control here, 
because OMA system is putting a lot of effort in making you control your devices in just another way, using your voice. And that's their goal. So you can say to me, but we have a rule engine on in Home Assistant and we can use it, and that's true. But what I think uh, is that this rule engine are designed to let everyone, almost everyone, create simple automation in a simple way. And uh, to answer my own question, if I think there is enough automation in home automation, I think the answer is no. And I think that the reason is why we, have, we haven't the right tools for doing proper automation. I mean, compl complex automation. So um, in this second uh, part, I would like to show you what I think could, uh, what kind of solution I have almost working at my own. Uh, and yes, let me show you. So here is are three switches, no more than switches. But you can see that the, the second one is not in an on or off state. It has another state. The forced state. And uh, this is something that knows just the system, not the device itself, but it's for me that's enough. And uh, near the state there is uh, the events it receives and that makes the automation change. And you can also spot that uh, there are different events, so this means uh, these are all different automation for the very same kind of device. And this is, uh, again, a history for the very same device as before in the same time. But this time we can see something more. We can see that the second time the light was not just on, it, wa it was forced on, and also we can see that for a while no one was there, and since it was forced on, the light stayed on, since uh, someone unforced it. And a mm, few seconds later, someone walked near the light and it turned it on, but this time was the system to turn it on. I think that here we have something, some more information. And uh, yeah, another thing I have, I can interact with the automation I create. And uh, this is not really something that I use every day. I mean, this is just useful if you want to debug your um, connection, I mean, when you connect your automation with your devices, or maybe when uh, f the system, for some kind of reason, goes out of sync. Maybe it was just shut it off for a while, so uh, the system... Okay, this is not something I, I need uh, every day, but this instead is something I really use. And this is something that lets you um, change your automation accordingly with your needs. Um, what I'm saying here to the system is stop managing the brightness event, uh, behave like if outside is always uh, bright. And in this way, this automation will end up not turning on my light again uh, automatic automatically because th it's uh, like there is always bright outside. Uh, maybe this is not the best example. I probably use this feature more with other models like the blinds model or other kind of devices, but uh, I think that uh, be able to adjust 
the automation to your needs, because uh, your needs changes, uh, it's something really useful. And uh, to summarize it, which is the difference between this project and the other projects I know, um, the difference is that uh, I write different abstract state machines for every automation I want, and this state machine became become the model of different on-off lights, which are all the same device. In the other home automation system, all the lights, uh, all mm, the same lights, <laughs> have always uh, the same model. And uh, uh, yeah, one uh, yeah. Well, now we can go through an example of how to use this project. So the first thing you need is to choose your automation, choose your model. So for example, I have put here two models, the kitchen model we have already discussed, and another simple model, like uh, um, state machine I could uh, use for a, an outdoor uh, wall light. And uh, after you have chosen your model, you can put it down. So you give, it, you give them a name, and so, uh, they, so like this. And then what is missing is how to connect these abstract state machines to the real devices. And uh, here I'm doing this. Uh, so, my wall light, my outdoor wall light, is a KNX device. So, I'm saying here uh, that uh, this command is able to send an on command when the state for my abstract state machine is on or forced on. And it's also able to send an off command to this address, which is a KNX address, so no internet um, address, just something different. And yes, it's able to send also an off command when the state is forced off or off. In the same way, we, are, we need to, to, send, to the send to the abstract state machine the events. We need to say, which are the um, which are the uh, com mm, yeah, mm, messages on the bus that trigger some event? So, for example, uh, messages uh, uh, to these multicast addresses can be mapped to a forced event on if the the command uh, inside the message is on. Otherwise, they can be mapped to force it off if the uh, command inside the message is off. And uh, in the same way, we can connect the kitchen light. In this case, I, have not, I don't know which kind of device I have behind my kitchen light because I'm uh, connecting to it using Home Assistant as a gateway. So I just know how to, wi which is its name for Home Assistant. And uh, yeah, in this case, uh, the commands can manage just or the on, in this case, or the turn off. So uh, I need both of them to be able to manage the on force it on, off, and force it off state. And uh, in the same way we have uh, done before, we need to map also the messages uh, going through Home Assistant uh, that triggers a force it on event and a force it off event. And uh, 
after I have done this, I can put together my two lights. This will be used later. <coughs> uh, I need for the kitchen light to manage also the motion, no motion events. And here I sending this kind of events to my state machine. So, oh, sorry. So, uh, yeah, in this case, again, uh, my motion sensor is a KNX uh, device sensor. So I'm listening to a KNX uh, address and I'm mapping this message to a, okay, an event that has this name, but maybe can be improved, but it's like motion event spotted. And in the same way when we have no motion anymore. And this is quite thing simple, I think. This is more complex. How can we uh, deal with the brightness? I mean, it is simple if we want to, if we want to just, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, the simple solution uh, brings with it that if a cloud uh, ac across your sky, then the light will turn on, otherwise it will be turned off. And uh, I don't want such cases, so I need um, an integration of the data. For this, I need a scheduler, and uh, this is why this example is a little bit more complex. So here I'm collecting the data that are coming from a sensor, again a KNX sensor, and are the data of light. And I'm using these two triggers that says, okay, uh, this is, uh, yeah, sorry, this is greater than this value. Uh, if the collected data is greater, greater than that value, then uh, send to the uh, state machine a brightness event. And this is saying if uh, the collected data is lesser than this, then send to the state machine the dark event. And uh, yeah, and we need to schedule it. Uh, to collect the data and analyze the data every se 60 seconds into the scheduler. And we do this like uh, in, in this example. So we are scheduling the triggers, which will send their, their events to our uh, mm, state machine through the performance. Sorry? Uh, so uh, these are looks, I think. Um, yeah, you can, this, this trigger don't really know uh, the value you put in. So you can put everything, but my sensor is measuring looks. So these are looks. And this is done. We have completely automated both the lights and uh, all the events for all the lights. So for one light, six events, for the other light, four events. And uh, probably you are wondering, what about building your own model? You need to be a developer uh, because models are written in Python and uh, yeah, are state machine written in Python. But at least uh, I think that they can be reusable. I try uh, to make them uh, understandable using BDD, testing them with BDD. And using BDD, you can then read their, beha their behavior. And uh, yes, at, at least this. Uh, and uh, yeah, which is the difference between uh, so another um, from another point of view, which is the difference between Home Assistant 
in this project. In Home Assistant, you have your physical <coughs> device already modeled, and you write an automation around it. In this mm, project, you write the automation, and then you, uh, you tell to the system how to interact uh, with uh, your automation, how, uh, how the physical devices can interact with your uh, automation. And I, I know that this can seem boring, but I really like this feature, feature because uh, it uh, really gives you a lot of freedom. I try to do just an example. I have these uh, blinds. Uh, they are not outdoor, are inside my room, but, they are, but I have no sensor inside my room for detecting when uh, my windows are open. So, or I give up of using any kind of automation because it's too dangerous to close automatically the blinds when the window is open. Or I can have an automation, a complete automation, and just say to the uh, automation that it can only turn up the blinds. And this is what I'm doing. Uh, I never connected the uh, down command for my blinds in my automation because it's too dangerous. But I can. But the automation works perfectly with all the other states when it comes to, um, yeah, to move up the blinds. And uh, yeah, here are the links related with uh, some example for the project. And uh, yeah, what next? Um, if you want, try it out. Let me know what do you think. And if you want, you can improve it. Can you go back to the link that can't access that? <laughs> <coughs> and yes, so uh, now <laughs> uh, any question? Uh, I'm not sure I got okay. here, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I understand your problem, I don't like to turn off my light. Um, in the kitchen uh, state machine, uh, if, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh,
Go. Okay.